Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Axon 30 5G from ZTE. This phone has what ZTE is calling the next generation of the under-display selfie camera, which is practically invisible. Not only will we see how it performs, but also how it works by taking apart the phone. Taking the phone out of the box, I noticed one of the cameras had been scraping away at the plastic tray it was sitting in. While the phone is unharmed, the packaging doesn't seem to have secured the phone well enough. Also included with the phone was a warranty card, a plastic case, a 65 watt fast charger, and USB-C cable. I'm happy to see the inclusion of both a case and the all-important charger, something companies have gotten away with removing. This particular phone is a US model, so I can't use the charger without an adapter here in Australia. Getting the phone out of its plastic wrap reveals a sticker with some extra information. What catches my eye is a tip saying the battery is not removable and not to remove the back cover. I think we all know I'm not going to listen to that. In fact, I'm going to try and prove that statement wrong. Regardless, let's get rid of that sticker so we can take a look at the phone itself. This phone packs a Snapdragon 870 processor and 8 or 12 gigabytes of RAM depending on the model. However, the most interesting feature of this whole phone is its selfie camera. Gone are the days for a notch or hole punch in the display. This camera sits under seven layers of screen and is almost completely invisible on both dark and bright backgrounds. Unlike other attempts from both ZTE and other manufacturers, this one you cannot see under normal conditions. Let's open up the phone to see how this works. I'll soften the adhesive holding on the back panel using a heat plate. This will allow a suction cup to be able to pull up on the plastic panel, creating a gap for the plastic pick to be inserted. From there, we can work around the perimeter, cutting through the stubborn adhesive. It's significantly stronger than what's found on a lot of newer Samsung phones that I've taken apart. To further complicate things, there is a substantial amount of adhesive around the camera area. The plastic backing is more durable than glass, so it's less likely to break on removal. However, it can still be warped or disformed if overheated, or snapped if not enough care is given. With the back panel free, we can get our first look inside this phone. Being designed with the main components attached to the back of the display means we'll need to remove the mid-frame first before we can access any of the internals. One of the screws inside has a padlock sticker over it, which I believe is some kind of warranty void if removed type sticker, which are apparently illegal in some countries around the world. With the screws removed, it's time for the NFC antenna to be unadhered before we attempt to separate the mid-frame from the display. In a similar manner to the back panel, I'll use plastic picks to unlatch the clips, securing it into place. However, I ran into an issue. No matter how much I tried, the top section just wouldn't come loose. I decided to look under the camera lens. After fighting with its adhesive, I successfully removed it, revealing one more screw that I needed to remove. Trying again, I faced the same challenge. So I had to do some more poking around. I found a second hidden screw that was under the camera lens, but was also covered with a metal looking cover, hiding it further. After it had been removed, the mid-frame came right off. With the warning sticker on the back, warranty void sticker on a screw, and hidden screws holding the phone together, it seems ZTE really doesn't want you disassembling your phone. It's now time to take a closer look at the selfie camera. I want to first compare the quality of the sensor inside and outside the display. Is there a noticeable difference? Shooting with the camera outside, you can see the quality it can achieve. The phone does process every photo after it's been taken to try and remove any imperfections that would have been caused by the camera being under the display. Pushing the camera back under the display, we can compare the quality. From a first glance, I couldn't really notice any major difference, except the usual halo effect on lights, which is common on these under display cameras. However, when comparing the two images, you can start to see the differences. Both images are grainy, but with the camera under the screen, the image is less detailed and washed out. Zooming in 300%, you can see the major loss in detail when looking at the clamp sitting on the shelf behind me. Despite the quality loss, it's still amazing what was achieved. I'm going to disconnect the two battery connections before we dive deeper and do some more experimenting. 
I want to see if we remove the camera, can we see through the screen? Sure enough, we can. It has a slight green tint to it, but otherwise looks unobstructed. Next, I want to see what it looks like powered on, without the camera attached. Can we still see through the screen? We sure can. In fact, if you put a black object behind the phone, the hole disappears, just like a magic trick. However, if you use a different colored item, the hole remains and you can just see the object. With the underscreen camera thoroughly tested, we can continue disassembling the phone to see how repairable it is, and what it takes to get out that so-called non-removable battery. I'll start by disconnecting all of the flex cables attaching to the motherboard along with two antenna cables. A further two screws need to be unfastened and then the motherboard can be lifted out of place. The main camera is glued in so it doesn't come out with the board. Proceeding, it's time to get the battery out. After removing this piece of foam, we can get a good look at the warning label, which also says the battery is not removable, and removing it may cause fire or explosion. I believe if a company has to put a label like this on their product, they've obviously made it too hard to remove, and that just shouldn't be allowed. I'll use my heat plate again, set on high to try and soften the adhesive. This battery was held in with way too much glue. With no removal tab or anything to assist in its removal, I had to use some alcohol and a plastic pick to get it out. Down at the bottom of the phone is where things get more repairable. Both the speaker and charge port are held in with screws and no adhesive, so they come out with no trouble at all. Even the vibration motor below has no glue holding it in. Instead, the surrounding components hold it in securely. A first for my eyes and a welcomed move. The fingerprint sensor is held in with some adhesive, but came out with ease. The sensor looks to be an optical-based fingerprint scanner based on its appearance. With both an under-display camera and fingerprint reader, this phone has two invisible holes right in its screen. With that, the Axon 30 is completely disassembled. If it wasn't for the hidden screws and deterrent stickers, I would say overall it seems on par with other Android phones in terms of repairability. The inclusion of a battery release tab or weaker adhesive would have also been a nice inclusion. Of course, now it's time I reassemble the phone and get it back into one piece. With the bottom section installed, it's time to move to the top where I will wipe off the remaining thermal paste and apply some new stuff to replace it. Afterwards, I can reinstall the motherboard into the phone, making sure not to trap any cables underneath in the process. With its two screws fastened, it's time for all of the flex cables and two antenna wires to be reattached. Next is the battery. It's got two cables supplying power. I'm not sure if that's so it can handle the 65 watt fast charging, or maybe the battery contains two packs. After the front facing camera is installed, it's time to attach the remaining flex cables for the buttons and the battery. I'll give the inside a bit of a wipe down with a microfiber cloth before attaching the mid frame and adhering in that piece of foam we removed earlier, as well as the NFC antenna, which adheres down to the lower speaker. Then I can go ahead and fasten all of the Phillips head screws, securing the mid frame in place. Before I can reattach the back panel, I firstly need to scrape off all the residual adhesive. This was the most time consuming part of the reassembly process as the glue used was very strong and tended to disintegrate when trying to pull it up. Before installing the new adhesive, I'll install the camera lens back into position. As this phone hasn't gone on sale yet and is therefore well off having accessible replacement parts, I didn't have any pre-cut adhesive to use, so I used some cut off a roll.
I applied this in the same way it was done originally, which includes going around the camera lens. After applying sufficient adhesive, I could remove all of the plastic protective film over the top, give the inside of the phone a wipe down with a microfiber cloth, before attaching the rear panel back onto the device. After pressing it firmly back into place, we're done. So this is it, the ZTE Axon 30. Packing some really cool tech that I see becoming a lot more mainstream in upcoming years. I spent some time with the device prior to disassembling it to get a feel of other aspects of the phone. It has a total of four cameras on the back, with one of those being a depth sensor. Based on a short time with the phone, I found the main camera, which is made by Sony, would be the only camera I would use. It produces good images, and I don't have any complaints about it. However, the wide-angle camera looks like a laptop webcam from 2010, and I found the dedicated macro camera to be no use, as the main Sony sensor could produce images just as close that are equal or better quality. If you get your hands on one of these, be sure to put on a screen protector right away, as I noticed some scratches in just a few hours of taking it out of the box. Overall, the phone has some awesome features, including the ability to enable OEM unlocking, suggesting the bootloader is unlocked. This video was made using a review device provided by ZTE. ZTE had no editorial input and isn't providing me with any compensation for producing the video. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the Teardown playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.